What's up, y'all? Welcome back. So this weekend I did a thing. Went to a convention. First convention that I've been to this year in the year 2022. Last year I only did, what was it? Fans, Fan Expo for in, in Dallas. And that was the last uh, convention that I've ever been, been to. But I wanted to go to a convention this year that represented something that I'm passionate about. And that is Transformers. Friday morning, I woke up in Dallas, 4 a.m., took the flight to Chicago at 6 a.m. The actual beginning of the TFCon was about 5 p.m., but I rolled in about 10, 10 a.m. to the hotel. So I went there and kind of, uh, yeah, I, I, I slapped. <laughs> I slapped. I grow long in the tooth prime. <laughs> I'm getting old. After I slept, went downstairs to the line for the pre-registration, my golly, folks. The one thing they did not do properly was figure out the line structure. <laughs> but I met some people there, you know, doing some conversation, this and that. If you do ever meet me, like, in person, I, I really am shy. You get, if you say hi to Gato and stuff, I'll be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> that's just, that's, that's my nature. Once you, once you get to know me then, you know, or once I get to know you, pretty much a, just a screwball. But uh, I met this homeboy that was uh, in line. He and I had been going to conventions probably about the same amount of years as we are at old. <laughs> He's like, I've been going for, since I was like 13 years old. And I said, I, I've been going to San Diego Comic-Con since I was 11 years old when I was in a hotel, not in a big convention center. I guess he'd only been collecting Transformers for a couple years, but he's been going to Comic-Cons for all those other years. And he's like, this is my first con uh, Transformer Con and my homeboy's gonna get this, which was like the fans hobby exclusive God Delta, I think it was Power Master Optimus Prime, it, but it was colored like the Delta version of Ultra Magnus, which was that blue and red. And it, I mean, that, that was a con exclusive, 600 were made. So yeah, his, his, his buddy was looking for that. And I was like, yeah, I'm only looking for two things. And when I told him what, what they were, he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, good luck with that. You know, um, I'll keep an eye. And if I see you in the convention, I'll, I'll let you know. So let's let's go over the schedule here from Friday. Uh, we had we had that pre-registration from five five p.m. to eight p.m. From six p.m. to ten p.m. There was also the Transformer TCG role-playing uh, open play type of thing downstairs. And for the life of me, I didn't even know that the TCG was still around. I thought they got canceled, but apparently they reformatted it, or maybe they've completely change it, it's now an RPG. You know, since I collect Pokemon cards, I thought, hey, Transformer cards, that's kind of right up my alley. I don't know how to play. Like, 7 p.m. was really cool. The first actual panel, and it was the Licensed Transformers Oddity, Oddities, by Rook, uh, the panelist was Rick Alvarez. Apparently he was the brand manager for Transformers back in the day, I want to say probably about 2007 was his last year. This panel, ran the gamut from Optimus Prime bubble bath and stuff from Italy all the way to Argentina, uh, wherever he traveled. But it's interesting to see, <laughs> you know, you got like the, what do you call those? The little, uh, those bubbles, you know, like that type of stuff with Bumblebee on it. 8 p.m. We had the opening ceremonies and yeah, it was a good 10 minutes of them just saying, welcome to TFCon Chicago 2022. And people, you know, what have you. That was about it, it was 10 minutes. When I was leaving my hotel room, I was on the third floor, there were some dudes going into another hotel room with a big old cart of like just Transformer goods. And I'm like, yo, did they just buy that stuff? But no, they were setting up shop in their hotel room. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna be open about um, nine o'clock. And uh, if you wanna come by, or no, actually seven o'clock, seven o'clock. And they said, if you wanna come by, you know, you can do some shopping. I'm like, what? You know, I, I'd heard about this in, at TF Nation in England that they kind of do some toy swapping, you know, trading and uh, buying off each other type of type of stuff. I didn't think it happened here in the States, but the, again, this is my first time at a Transformer convention. I mean, we don't, I, I don't even know if we do that at a normal comic. -Con. Went down to the bar, um, got me a, a beer, and then I was like, that's the first time I drank since, uh, since Jacob. And so I was like, yeah, I don't need to drink anymore. <laughs> 9 a.m. was when the dealership opened for 
all the people that have pre-regged three extra hours before the general admission came by and the doors were open for them. That was 12 p.m. So really, you just walk in to this place, to this showroom, and it's it's not, I mean, it's, it's expansive, but it's not huge like the San Diego Comic-Con or anything like that. But man, just seeing all that plastic crack everywhere as the far as, far as the eye can see. You got the normal licensed Hasbro stuff. You got the third parties here. You got artists and everything. And, and they even had that RoboSend, the big Optimus Prime that transforms by itself and has the voice of Peter Cullen. That was there as well. Wow. Talk about sensory overload. <laughs> and talk about generation gaps as well. I was standing there at this one booth and I remember looking for specifically Cosmos. I only saw one Cosmos and it was like $90. There was a modulator that I was looking at. This kid came by, I, I want to say early early teens or something like that and he was trying to strike up a conversation with me and yeah and I think he was talking maybe about animated or he was talking about one of the shows that I haven't seen, maybe even R.I.D. Uh, 2015. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that, that white bot there. That, that white bot looks good. <laughs> That's about it. But no no offense to any uh, you know anybody trying to strike up a conversation. That was that was actually cool that seeing the passion from the younger generation, as much passion that us older folks show for, for this this line. I mean it's growing old in the tooth as well. I'm seeing dads like my age bringing their their sons and daughters and their wives and you know seeing it through the eyes of the kids going, look at this toy, and it might be just like in a it might just be in a little baggy or something like that. They were just like, I want this one because it's green or something yeah cool when I went to the panels I was just like oh my god I'm in a room full of geeks but oh wait I'm a geek yeah <laughs> we're all here for the same reason plastic crack that transforms so let's see the rest of the day uh, I want to say actually I got the two figures that I wanted within the first 15 minutes of myself being there and the dude that I met uh, the, the day before saying, hey, good luck with that, you know, he, he actually spotted the figures I wanted and I was at the Chosen Prime booth and he's like, hey, did you see, you know, so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, I just bought him like two seconds ago. And he's like, okay, I, I was hoping I'd see you. And I was like, hey, they're right here. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, good looking out, bro. I got the two figures that I wanted right when I got to Chicago and I had, everything else was gonna be just icing on the cake. So we had some uh, guest autographs, you know, with the with the voice actors. We had Peter Colland, the voice of uh, Optimus Prime, and Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Thank you. Uh, we had Andy Bartlett, who was the voice of Rhinox in the Netflix Kingdom Transformers Kingdom. We had Sue Blue, she was RC, and we had David Kay, uh, voice of Megatron and Beast Wars, and also I think he was the voice of Optimus Prime in Animated? Question mark. I don't know it all guys, okay? I didn't do a lot of eating this, this weekend. I, I think I had a couple of protein bars. I did, 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 did. Finally, eat some Chicago dogs. I'm talking, you know, the ones with the work. The dog, you got the mustard, the pickle spear, the tomatoes, the green relish type of thing, and the peppers. It was delicious. Yay! Uh, Peter Cullen did a lot of either autographing or photo sessions. I didn't get to go to any of them. Those were all sold out before I even got tickets uh, last month. And there were some panels with Paul Eiding was there. He was the voice of Perceptor from the G1 cartoon. And Sue Blue and Ron Freeman. He was the writer of Transformers uh, the movie. And there was also a panel with Aaron Archer. Aaron Archer was there. He was the, what was he? The product designer, I believe? Product designer of Transformers from the Unicron series series and he actually even said at the end of the con that this was his this was his favorite convention that he's ever been to like transformer related all right and then at 4 p.m we had the the third party product review so there were things coming out from fan toys fans hobby iron factory uh there's a new one like uh HTB Toys, I think it was, Half the Battle Toys. So anyway, we had that. I had uh, an enjoyable time there because I just love listening to everybody making their comments and <laughs> the panelists trying to talk over them. And just, we're fanatical, we're, we're fans. We're here for a reason and you know, just, oh my God, that it's ugly, whatever. And I'm just like, you're, you're not wrong, but <laughs> come on, you know, show some sensibility. All right, so I already got the two figures that I came here for. So now it's time to look for prints. 
<laughs> all the artwork and all the good stuff. And I gotta tell you, some of these prints are looking pretty good. We got some good artists here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Whoop. Windblade. I saw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're here at TFCon 2022 with Sarah Kitra. Yeah, <laughs> She used to draw all for the IDW and all that, so I am buying the Combaticons right here. Say hi to you too. All right, cool. Thank you so much, appreciate that. Oh my gosh, I'm signing it. Cool. All right, now we're here with Josh Bertram. He did the Beast Wars for IDW. And I told you guys earlier this year, that was like the best series that came out this year. So that's Josh right there. <laughs> and he's gonna be signing the, uh, the Transformers Best of the Beast. All right, cool. All right, thank you so much. And how there we go. This is great. Totally. There we go. Thank you so much. Your book? This is Kaiju Arts on Instagram. Did the cover for the piece. It's actually TGP on Instagram. I'm Kaiju Arts on Twitch. TC. Yeah. <laughs> There was also a live script audition and reading at 6 p.m. that night. I might have been at a panel during the day that I don't remember because I fell asleep. So there might be some pictures around the net of me just <laughs> asleep. I don't know if someone ever did that. That's kind of embarrassing. I ended up not going to the live script audition reading. I would have loved to actually join in that because I love doing voices. That was the end of the night. There, there were some parties at the bars and what have you, but again, I'm not drinking these days so you know i was just like well, i mean yeah. <laughs> I, it's my first con bear with me you know i did find this lady her name was i believe tanya and she brought her son and his wife all the way from san francisco for this convention she said i'm actually responsible for my son loving transformers this much because when he was a little boy i bought him this two-pack called beast wars and it had optimus and then she was like Ooh, and I'm like, Primal? And she goes, yeah, and, and Megatron. Except Optimus was like an alligator. And I'm like, yeah, and then Megatron was a bat. And I'm like, dude, that's rare. <laughs> that was a rare one to find. That's amazing. So she was actually there for moral support, but she ended up actually buying a ticket during Saturday just to go into the convention, into the dealer, dealer hall and see what she could buy. <laughs> and then I met this other guy. I think his name was Pete or James. Sounds familiar, but I'll, I'll figure it out because they invited me to the realm of collectors and I told them about my YouTube channel. So hopefully they're seeing, they're watching these videos and what have you. Glad to have you along and uh, I will join you guys as well. We can talk shop. And then Sunday came by. The dealer room opened at 10 a.m. and it only was open till 4 p.m. Uh, but in between those times there were some more panels and I, I mean man you know that's the good thing about conventions as the older you know the older you get the more you get appreciative that there's panels because you get to sit down you get to have a cup of water <laughs> you know when I was a kid I'd be running around the, the show floor and comic book comic book comic artist over here you know I mean I'm getting old I've said that dozens of times on this video, I'm sure. And it's it's time to rest. It's time to sit back and just appreciate why you're there. <laughs> so the, the workshops or the panels that I went to was like a 10 a.m. Generational schisms of representations in Transformers G1 to IDW. That was interesting because, you know, as, as some of the older fans, I've been reading on the boards and whatnot, they're like, you know, Cyclonus can't be gay, blah, blah, blah. And how, how could he love tailgate? I mean, who doesn't love tailgate? Females, males, whoever are going to love tailgate. He's cute, he's cute, he's a cute little car. That's all I gotta say, he's got a cute little car. It got me thinking, the way a character is represented in one cartoon in, or comic is not gonna be the same. There's gonna be different iterations of same named character, it's a trademark. And it got me thinking to myself, this whole line is called Transformers. It's going to transform. In the past 30 plus years, almost 40 years, this line would have been dead by now. 
to see the fluidity of the way a character is represented from one generation to another or another storyline. That's that's what it is. It's transforming. So Transformers in its in itself the name, those characters are going to transform. And that's like, bang, okay, I got it. I got you. I got you, boo. The one I did go to was the Q&A with Transformer Kingdom voice actor Andy Bartlett. I actually like that because voice acting is always something that I've like marveled at. To understand the way they chose their methodology, the way they spoke their lines, was not from the actor themselves. Actually, Andy was like, I wanted to, I wanted to have Rhinox talk normal, but the director and, and the higher ups were saying, we need to slow all the lines so much so we can pass the time. That sucks, because I mean, being in a, being in a, a voice actor or any actor, you're just like, let me, let me do it like this, and then. Uh, you know, if you don't like it, we'll change it up. To know that even that dude that did the voice of Optimus Prime, which was not Peter Cullen, it wasn't his fault that he had to speak his line slowly. It was the higher ups. And there were other panels that happened, but I wanted to go back on the floor because as the convention's closing, the, the dealers are going to start selling product at a cheaper price. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. I was banking on something because <laughs> there was one thing that I was looking at for the entire convention. The first booth, that I, like I told you about, he had a product that I wanted and he would not let go of the price. And I'm just like, yo, you got 20 minutes left before the, the, the whole floor closes. Hey, you wanna strike a deal? Oh, I can't, man. We actually hit it off and I was like, all right, bro, I got you. I know, <laughs> I know you need your cash. That is my entire convention. Y'all probably wanna know my haul. I'm gonna start off with the first day, the, the hotel shopping. I was just looking around and I kind of grew to like these characters. I never liked them as a kid because I was growing out of TF back then. Got some MicroMasters and this, this is Red Heat and Stakeout. The reason why I got them is this one looks like hose head or cap and this one looks like go shooter and in fact they pretty much representations of them they actually i think these characters right here are coming with that star saber that we're getting later this year but five dollars yeah that's that's a good buy and i also bought this little micro master from titans return this is shuffler it's this little micro guy turns into a head but Really, it's about this guy. This was the last wave of Titans Return. It was wave four. And just like its G1 counterpart, the G1 counterpart was also last in line. These were really hard to find. I really actually didn't find Shuffler at all in the stores. Now, with those mini cons, it needs a base because they transform into cars and they have robots that turn into little bases like gas stations, radio stations, space shuttle platforms. So I did buy one and that was from that dude that <laughs> would not falter with his pricing. I got the Transformers Select Hot House. Still not opened yet. Actually, nothing's been opened. Those are my only licensed products. Everything else is third party. Yeah, I can tell you why I started liking this line this year. This guy. So from my top 10 things that I liked in quarter one of this year, Cap was one of those. Uh, of course, I haven't done any of these other quarters because that video really didn't do that well, but I am still going to do one for the end of the year, all right? So watch it. Just watch it, okay? But with Cap or Hosehead, the junior headmaster, I'm like, he is one of three of the junior headmasters. I had just watched Transformer Master Force, the English sub version earlier this year. So I'm like, I, I really like these characters. The second headmaster that I got, that junior headmaster is Athena or Minerva. All right, so the female, this is the second female Autobot represented uh, way back in the day. She, she's a junior headmaster. Heard there's some QC issues with that one, but we'll find out later. And of course I had to get Go Shooter or fans hobby calls it Ace Hita. Look, uh, wait, where is he? See that character right there? Looks like this character right here. So that guy, that guy. I think they are represent, <laughs> representing each other. They are MicroMasters, Headmasters. That was it. This is, these are the two things that I really came to TFCon looking for. But there were other things. I was walking through the Chosen Prime. Uh, they also sponsored TFCon as well. I was walking through their booth and I saw something that caught my eye. And I'm like, oh, but they are Legend Scale. Legend Scale, or nowadays I think they're called Core Class. They're about that big. Okay? They're not that big. Probably about three to four inch tall type of action figures. So I'm like, they don't really belong unless they were actually mini bots back in the day. But this, this line caught my eye and it's by Iron Factory. And Iron Factory is known for legend scales. 
<sighs> but they started doing samurai versions of characters and I had to get this. This is the samurai version of Grimlock. Look at this. Definitely going to be a review of this toy because it's immaculate. The way it transforms completely different from any other Grimlock that has ever been made. <clears throat> the last thing that I purchased, uh, well, okay. IDW, when they first got the Transformer line, they did a, a separate timeline, I guess, comic book called Evolutions, Transformer Evolutions. Transformers were reawakened from their crash on Earth in the olden times when we had steamboats and what have you. Bumblebee was represented in that comic as a steam engine train. This company called Mechanic did a Bumblebee version of the, the, the steam engine train. So they did a Bumblebee and I'm like, I have so many Bumblebees. I have an Origins Bumblebee that I haven't even opened yet. And I've got all these other Bumblebees on my on my collection that you know I'm probably gonna be selling off. And they had Cliff Jumper, of course, because Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper, huh, same, same, color swap. But they had another one I gotta be honest with you I didn't know what it was I just I like the colors okay this time it was not only the representation of Bumblebee from evolutions but it was the color so this is mechanics version of Steam Age and his name is Steve Train okay that's what it looks like that's the, that's the train right there I am definitely going to review this because this is the one that I actually did open right here on Saturday night when I was reviewing my last uh, video and watching some NFL type of, you know, the highlights and whatnot. I'm going to save that. Uh, if, if, if you know about this, this figure, you already know what I'm going to talk about, but for everybody else, it's going to be a surprise. Look at the art. So one of the first artists that I got to meet, uh, she actually drew for IDW. I, I believe she did Windblade, Talala 1 as well. Her name is Sarah Peter Peter Dorsch. <laughs> I can't pronounce her last name, but she was very gracious to sign this for me. This is her version of the Combaticons. Combaticons, yeah. And there's her signature right there. So, uh, Miss Sarah, thank you so much for signing this. And you're a beautiful person. Keep on doing some great work. Uh, the other person that I saw there was Josh Burcham. He did the Beast Wars, the latest Beast Wars comic from IDW. He signed this right here. This is a Transformers Best of the Beast. I've been collecting these best of lately. It's a nice collection of the stuff that IDW has published back in the day. So yeah, there's, there's some of his artwork there. I did get to meet this awesome Japanese artist, I believe he's Japanese, it's Kaiju, Kaiju art. Fantastic art, oh my God. Okay, let me show you this. Do, 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 do. Power Master Optimus Prime, there's his signature right there. God, look at that artwork. Mm. I mean, okay, that's Optimus Prime, but of course, one of my favorite representations of Optimus is this. Yeah, buddy, Optimus Primal. I guess if you're on Instagram, I'm not on, on Instagram, but he goes by IG Arts or something like that. Mm, I got a couple of other artists, um, freelancers, if you will. Uh, this lady did these, this tarantulas. <laughs> I just, I love tarantulas. That's, he's such a backstabbing fool. And then the last one, uh, this artist actually wasn't there. She was uh, out of town getting her PhD. So congrats on that. But her cohorts were there. Got me to buy this. <laughs> Trailbreaker, the IDW version of Trailbreaker. Of course, I am not caught up with all the IDW. When I was talking about a certain character named Tarn, which is like my favorite, I was looking for artwork for Tarn. They kind of spoiled uh, some of the endings for that particular character, Trailbreaker. R.I.P. Okay, again, fun weekend, very fast, media overload, senses were just on fuego. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. If you ever go to one of these kind of conventions, either TF Nation, TF Con, or BotCon, go to it. Experience the, the joy of all these other people having the same like for a, for a particular brand. So anyway, I'm gonna close this off. If you liked this video, go ahead and click that like button, click subscribe, click on the notification bell, let you know I came out with another video for y'all. See you next time. Peace.